Is no thing same as nothing? <laughs> Universal. It's just words, isn't it? No thing, nothing. I don't know, it depends what you associate with those words. To me it is. No thing, nothing. But you can say it in different ways, so... Like this world is made of nothing, and then there's nothing for dinner tonight. They have different meanings, that's the nature of words. I love it, learning different languages, because um, you really begin to experience the absurdity of the way we speak. And we don't really speak about it when it's our mother, speak about it, think about it when it's our mother tongue. So things like... Um, Does that work? And then I am going to work. So I am going to work a job, which is a work. But does that work means, does that work? Like, does the TV work? It's like, so to somebody that's learning that language, that can be quite abstract. Who cares though? You don't need to get your language right to get this. Trust me. I, I, my, my language is like boo boo in my head. Sometimes I think maybe I'll forget language. Or sometimes I learn other languages and I sometimes get concerned. If I learn another language, I'll forget English. It's just the working of my brain. I'm like, oh, I really like to carry on speaking English. I have some friends that um, live in a different country and speak a different language, but they're native English speaker. And then when they're speaking English to me, I can see them forgetting English slightly. They're like, oh, what's that word again? I'm like, oh no. So language isn't it, right? It's something we learn and we build. We like building blocks to make more sense and more communication, which is about survival and building up a society and teaching. But it's not this moment, is it? It's something that comes and goes in this moment. So no thing or nothing. Like you just feel the confidence to add your own meaning in there. What is beyond all words? What is experiencing now? Is there a personal you experiencing? And then if you want something to do, even though it's not really you doing it, then put the personal awareness in the personal awareness. You can't really put it in the big consciousness, so put personal awareness in itself, which kind of keeps the mind still, which is balancing for the person. And then um, when you're having big emotions, investigate them in a psychological way. Learn different psychological, emotional release, trauma release ways in order to vest investigate them. Like I've speaking, spoken a lot about it in the past, like looking to where it is in the body, in the chakra, connecting it to past things. So if you're having a repetitive thought or difficult feeling. There's so many different ways. And again, like everything, it's not one shoe fits all and this is the supreme ultimate ultimate therapy that helps balance the person. But do all of that knowing that there's nobody doing it and that that is relaxing the person. And then something else might be seen. Not because of, just cause. Not because I relax the person. That's a story. That's the what you're telling yourself just because something else becomes seen. But wisdom, let me say again and again, wisdom is freaking settling down the person in time. That is wisdom. But not because it leads you to enlightenment, because who would be that you that gets to enlightenment? Who? Who? A characteristic, a movement in time, somebody that's rich or poor or nice or does good things or helps charities or is hated, isn't somebody that's experiencing now. It's a movement, it's a habit of the body. It's habits that are appearing, dependent on what it's interacting, it's reactions appearing. That's not you, that's not the experiencer. So how can that reaction then become enlightened? It can't. I'm just holding my cup today. It's like I'm just in this irony of there's no world and there's a world on a cup. 
I've been reading too much Douglas Adams. Um, I was listening a little bit last night to um, Dirk Gently's detective agency or something. I just, um, just was having a quick listen and the beginning of it is so sweet. It's about, um, it's robot. <laughs> this robot monk that's been invented to hold ideas but the robot monk goes a bit loopy because it has too many ideas that it has to hold and so it starts having really bizarre ideas it's really cute the way he says it i just love this idea so he gets put in in into the desert with a horse just and just allowed to have too many ideas to hold There's something like that. It's just so creative. It just feels like a bit of a Douglas Adams book. Like I'm sitting here talking about there is no world with a cup with a world on it. This doesn't exist. And yet here it is on a cup. You don't live on a world. Who lives on a world? There is simply this. <laughs> 